Good morning and welcome to Church at Home. I'm so glad that you are tuning in this morning. I hope that maybe you have gathered your family or friends in your home with you today as we sit down for this very special New Year's Day service. And so first of all, I just want to say if you are new here, if this is your first experience at Northwoods, I am so glad that you're here and that you have decided to worship and learn with us today. So be sure to pull out your phone and text new to the number on your screen to be connected with one of our pastors who would love to meet you and help you get more connected here at the church. Speaking of being connected, even though it's an online only weekend, we would love for you to pull out the Northwoods app and fill out the connection card. This is a way for you to get connected, but it's also a way for you to share prayer requests, to send in comments, and also to get more information about some of the things that we have coming up in this new year here at Northwood. So be sure to do that today. While you have your app open, I encourage you to check out the other awesome tools that are in there, like our sermon notes, and you can even watch past messages. And the app is also a really easy way that you can give. And so I just want to point that out to you. You can, of course, give a variety of different ways. You can go to the link on your screen. You can text whatever you prefer. But we just want to say from the bottom of our hearts here at Northwoods, thank you so much for your generosity and for giving. Like we say, every weekend. It is your giving that fuels the ministry that we are able to do here at Northwood. So thank you so much for that. Now, two other special ways that you can get connected for this online only service are by joining the chat and by joining a prayer chat. And so if you want to say hi to others who are tuned in online, just like you, be sure that you're tuned in on northwoods.online, join the chat, introduce yourself, and let us know where you're tuning in from this morning. Now, if you have a prayer need, we would love to pray for you. Just like there's altar prayer, if you visit us on one of our campuses, we have a live prayer team standing by available to pray with you this morning. So go ahead and click that request prayer button and get prayed for today. Now, there are just two other things that I want to make sure you know about before we get into today's service. And the first is that next Sunday, we are kicking off House of Prayer. It's a new series this January, and we are going to combine it with our annual 21 days of prayer and fasting. Now, this series is designed to help each and every one of us, no matter where we're at in our journey, grow and go deeper in our prayer life. So I encourage you to join us in that, to fast with us and pray with us over the rest of the month of January. And now something else awesome that you can do that's a little bit different than we've ever done before is that you can read the Bible with us this year. Every year we like to offer a one year Bible reading plan. And this year we're doing that in the YouVersion Bible app as a church together. We're going to be doing the one year chronological Bible plan. So visit the link on your screen or scan that QR code and get connected to that plan today because today is January 1st and day one of that reading plan. So again, I'm so glad that you are here. Go ahead and turn up your speakers, get yourself in a posture of worship that's comfortable for you. I encourage you to maybe even step out of your comfort zone and stand up and sing together by yourself or with whoever else is watching with you this morning and let's worship together.
every song we could ever sing. You're worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Oh, you are worthy. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no Oh my 
Happy New Year, Northwood. So good to be joining together online this New Year's Day. I hope it's been an enjoyable holiday season for you and your family. You know, as we enter into a new year today, I want to spend some time talking about a topic that seems to be on the front of our minds come every new year. It's the topic of personal growth. You know, this past summer, my side of the family took a trip out to Montana And I had driven through Montana before, but never really spent much time there. And if you've been to Montana, you know it's absolutely beautiful. But it was a drive to get there. 21 hours. That's a lot of time in the car, especially with some little ones in the back. 
And near the west side of South Dakota, you start getting to hills and features in the land. And somewhere around South Dakota and parts of Wyoming, we began seeing features that were larger than hills, but smaller than mountains and had flat tops. These are called plateaus. So plateaus are areas of high ground that are flat on top. And you know, when you get 42 hours of windshield time, that's there and back, you do a lot of thinking. And the plateaus caused me to ask this question. Am I growing or plateauing? Am I on the up or have I leveled out? Am I growing as a follower of Jesus, as a husband, as a father, as a pastor, as a leader? And I want to ask you, and in fact, I want you to ask the same question to yourself today, this new year. Am I growing or plateauing? This is a natural question that a lot of us are already asking as we ring in the new year. January 1st functions as a temporal landmark, and we often use it to construct new beginnings. For many of us, January 1 is the day we begin to reflect on the areas that we want to grow in the new year. So in a moment, we're going to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4 in our Bible and talk about the five requirements of growth. Now quickly, let me give you two reasons why each of us should be growing instead of plateauing. Here's reason number one, because potential is a terrible thing to waste. You know, once a month I meet with a mentor of mine and one of the things he says is, if you got potential at 20, it's exciting. If you only have potential at 50, it's sad. You know, one of the other things that I saw on the trip as we were heading out to Montana were oil pump jacks. You know the things that they're going up and down and they're taking oil up out of the out of the ground and they're bringing crude oil up out of the ground. Now crude oil has potential, but it has to be refined for it to be made useful. Because when it comes out of the ground, it has heavy metals, sand, sulfur, and there's all kinds of junk in it. But after it's refined, it can power cars, heat buildings, produce electricity. But before that, crude oil is just potential. And as I thought about that, it made me realize that, you know what, you and I are very similar to crude oil. Every one of us has potential that God has placed in us. But the potential must be refined and developed to be useful. And so personal growth is simply the inward conviction that your potential must be developed. So why should we pursue growth? Because potential is a terrible thing to waste. And then here's reason number two. Because everybody has the ability to grow. Every person listening today from the youngest to the oldest, can be more, know more, and give more. We never reach a place where we can't grow anymore. And the reason many stop growing and start plateauing is not because they can't grow anymore. It's simply because they have stopped working to develop all that God has placed in them. In other words, they become content with just living instead of growing. Listen, you can expand as a person. So why is personal growth important? Because potential is a terrible thing to waste and every single person can grow. Now, for the rest of our time, let's talk about what growth will require of us. You see, everybody wants to grow, but growth has a price. There are things it's going to require of you. And so I want to talk about these five growth requirements this morning, and they come straight out of 1 Timothy chapter 4. So if you have your Bible, you can turn there now. In 1 Timothy 4, the Apostle Paul writes to his young protege, Timothy, and in verses 12 through 15 of chapter 4, he outlines five requirements for growth. So let's jump into these. Requirement number one, growth requires intention. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers 
in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Now, all of us leave behind an example. And as I've thought about this, you know, it requires very little to leave behind an example. All you have to do is live. And however you live is going to be the example you leave. So if you're lazy, you leave behind an example of laziness. If you're disciplined, you leave behind an example of discipline. So leaving an example just requires living. But setting a specific example, well, that's going to require intention. And Paul said, I want you to grow yourself in these areas. He said in speech, in purity. And so he's saying, I want you to leave a specific example, which is going to require intention. See, growth always requires intention. Any proponent of growth would tell you that growth is never accidental and growth is never automatic. It always requires intention. So you're never going to stumble your way into a deeper relationship with Jesus. You will never accidentally start reading your Bible more. Your marriage won't go to a new level on its own. Any growth is going to require intention. So that means you are going to have to plan to grow if it's going to happen. If it isn't in your calendar, odds are it won't happen. Growth requires intention. Requirement number two, growth requires effort. Now you need to be intentional about your growth, but intentions are nothing without effort. Growth always requires effort. Look what Paul went on to say to Timothy. He said, until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and a teaching. That's verse 13. So if you're going to devote yourself to something, that implies effort. The word devote means to give all or a large part of one's time or resources. That's effort. You know, you never coast into growth. In fact, I want you to think about coasting whether you're on a bike or in a car. You coast when you're going downhill. So apply that to your life because if you're coasting in your life, odds are you are on a downward trajectory. But if you want to move uphill, that's going to require effort. And growth is always uphill and never easy. So now let's move on to requirement number three. Growth requires awareness. Meaning, for me to grow, I need to be aware of where I need to grow. John Maxwell always used to say, you have to know yourself to grow yourself. Paul went on to say, do not neglect your gift. Now hang on to that word, it's going to be important. Which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. That's verse 14. So I want to just ask you this. If I were to ask you, where do you need to grow in 2023? I think the majority of us would probably start with our weaknesses. But I want you to remember what Paul said. Paul said, do not neglect your gift. In other words, Paul is making Timothy aware of where the growth needs to happen or be focused. And it's in the area of your giftedness. Now, it's not wrong to focus on our areas of weakness, especially if they're hindering us, but I want to encourage you to focus your growth in 2023 on the things you do well, the places where you are naturally gifted, because that's where you will have the most significant impact. So let me share with you an exercise that's been really helpful for me in this area. So let's talk about a scale of 1 to 10. So on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being abysmal and 10 being exceptional, let's say I'm a 2 as a singer. Pretty bad. Now, could I take vocal lessons, practice, be mentored? Obviously, yes. But even with all of that, I will probably only move from about a 2 to a 4, which is still below average. That's not a great return on my time. In fact, I can't think of anybody that's out there looking for below average singers. But let's say, on the other hand, that I'm a six in communication, notch above average. 
Now, maybe you view me as below average. I hope not, but that's okay. But let's just say I'm a six with the potential to go to an eight or a nine. Well, a nine is going to make a much larger impact than a four any day. So I'm going to focus my growth on the places where I'm already strong and have the potential to be exceptional. You get what I'm saying? So hear me. I'm not saying forget about your weaknesses, but I am saying be aware of where you are strong and devote yourself there. But to do that, you have to be aware. This is why we say growth requires awareness. And I have found the best way to know yourself is to not only spend time in personal reflection, spending time in the Lord's presence, but also to get with others who know you well and are maybe ahead of you age-wise and ask them what areas they see as strengths in you. They might see some things that you don't. In fact, wherever you are tuning in from today, whether you're in your car, whether you're in your living room, with your family or other people, I would encourage you to, at the end of our time today, this would be a good exercise, take time and share with the others who are with you the strengths or gifts that you see in them. Just, if you're in a circle, you know, go around the circle and say, here's what I see in you, and do it for each person. Not only will it be helpful in making you aware of some of your giftedness, but it will also be encouraging. So growth can require intention, effort, awareness. Here's requirement number four. Growth is going to require consistency. Growth requires consistency. Look what Paul goes on to say. He said, be diligent in these matters. In other words, for everything I've just covered, be diligent in them. Diligent means we are constant in effort, or we might say consistent. In other words, growth doesn't happen in a moment. It happens over time as we are consistent day in and day out. You know this, just because you do something one time doesn't mean you're going to grow. It has to be done consistently over time. And some of us struggle in this area. And I want to encourage you to ask the Holy Spirit to develop consistency in you. In fact, because the Holy Spirit lives in you, you are capable of being consistent. Look what the Apostle Paul also said to Timothy. He said, for the Spirit God gave us, does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Each of us can be more disciplined and a more consistent person. Here's requirement number five. Growth requires trade-offs. Look at the end of verse 15. He said, be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. So give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Progress, that's growth. We're talking about growth. But we find here, growth requires trade-offs. Why? Because you can't give yourself wholly to everything. You're going to have to make trade-offs. And I have found that growing in my relationship with Christ constantly requires trade-offs. Meaning I can either sleep in, or I can trade an hour of sleep to spend time with the Lord. I can either post up on the couch while I mindlessly scroll through five different apps on my phone, or I can choose to invest that time in being fully present with my family or the people in front of me. Growth has a price, and the price is trade-offs. If you're gonna grow, you must be willing to trade off other things that have some value but aren't of ultimate value for you. For me, the hardest trade-off has always been giving up immediate gratification for personal growth. So many of us desire to grow but are unwilling to make the desired trade-offs to make it happen. So, in closing, if you want to grow instead of plateau in 2023, it's going to require intention, effort, awareness, consistency, and trade-offs. Let's make 2023 a year of growing instead of plateauing. Now, as we finish today, I want to give you two takeaways 
that will take your spiritual growth to a new level in 2023. Here's the first takeaway, a Bible reading plan. If you are not engaged in a Bible reading plan, I want to invite you to join our church-wide Bible reading plan that we're doing on the YouVersion app on your phone. We're going to do the one-year chronological Bible plan, and you can join and get directions on how to do that by going to northwoods.church slash Bible, or you can scan the QR code that's on your screen right now. So get involved in a Bible plan. That's the first takeaway. Here's the second takeaway, the 21-day fast. If you've been with us at Northwoods for any amount of time, or at least for a year, you know that at the beginning of every year, we set aside 21 days to seek the Lord through prayer and fasting. And this year, we're going to start that 21 days on Sunday, January 8th. So you got a week to get ready. And over the next week, I want to encourage you to begin praying and thinking about how the Lord might be calling you to engage in this year's fast. Some choose to do a normal fast, which is abstaining from food and drinking only water and 100% juice. Others might choose to do a partial fast, or we might say a Daniel fast, which is abstaining from meats, bread, sweets, wines, and soda, and eating only vegetables and fruit and drinking only water and juice. And while biblical fasting is about refraining from food for a spiritual purpose, Others choose to fast things like TV or social media. Listen, however you decide to engage, I want to encourage you to seek the Lord about it. Isaiah 58 teaches us that the acceptable fast is the fast that God has chosen. So seek Him about it and just whatever you begin to feel Him laying on your heart, commit to it for this 21-day fast in January. Guys, thanks so much for joining us today. As we close, I'm going to hand it back to the worship team, and they're going to lead us in one more song, and then I'll come back and pray us out. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you.
Thanks again for tuning in with us on your New Year's Day. I hope this has been a blessing to you. And let's just close our time by praying, joining our hearts together, and just asking the Lord's blessing over our year. So let's pray. Lord, again, I thank you so much for this opportunity that we can gather together today through technology. And Lord, I pray your blessing on every person, every family listening. And I pray that 2023, Lord, would be a year of growth in each and every life listening today, that we would grow in our relationship with you, that we would grow as spouses, that we would grow in however that might be for us, Lord. I pray that 2023 would be a year of growth, and I pray your blessing over every single person listening. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, thanks again for tuning in. I hope you have a great day.